Hello, everyone, and welcome to the weekend edition of Insider Financial Talk Stocks. My name is Alex Carlson. I will be your host today, the editor-in-chief of InsiderFinancial.com. And in this video, we will recap last week's market action and discuss our trading plan for Monday. And if you wait until the end of the video, I have two penny stocks on my radar for Monday. But first, if you want our free alerts, Click the link in the description or go to signup.insiderfinancial.com or sign up on any of the pop-ups on insiderfinancial.com. Sign up first with your email, then you can sign up with your mobile. Mobile is the fastest way to get all of our alerts and it works for all numbers worldwide. Simply enter your country code first followed by your number. For US and Canada, be one plus area code and number. Never begin the format with zero, it will not work. And after you sign up, you will get a welcome email which includes a free copy of the Insider Financial Guide to Penny Stocks ebook. Our ebook, our email service, and our text messaging services are all free services from insiderfinancial.com. We do not run any paid subscription whatsoever service whatsoever. We don't run any Telegram chat rooms or Discord rooms whatsoever. Well, with that out of the way, look, guys, uh, Friday was a good day here at InsiderFinancial.com. Uh, markets rallied on strong earnings report from Netflix and layoffs at Google. Uh, everyone's taking the lead from Elon Musk and where he's downsizing at Twitter. Everyone's looking and saying, if he can do it, we can do it as well. I traded uh, TQQQ and uh, QQQ options, which trended higher all day, closing at the highs. Here you can see the money that is you can make in trading options. The 280s were up 1,429% one, uh, on Friday. I like the, uh, when it comes to, you know, I don't want to buy QQQ, I'd rather do the options. Uh, I'd rather use the leveraged ETFs, can make more uh, money there. Uh, trading the leveraged ETFs, uh, the Q TQQQ was up over 8%, whereas uh, the QQQ was up just over 2% on Friday. And, you know, I start with the leverage ETF and then if I really, really like the play and I think we're going to trend higher uh, or lower throughout that day, um, like I said, I like to goose the returns with options only if I have a high conviction. Um, and if I, when it comes to trading options, I trade the nearest expiring contract date. So again, the nearest options, that's where you're going to get, uh, you, you know, most bang for your buck, uh, especially if you're just day trading. Um, and for me, you know, if I'm day trading, you know, I'm in the play that day, I have a good feeling or conviction of where the market's going to head uh, or end that day. If you ask me right now, where is the market going this week? I have no idea. We're going to be higher or lower next week. I have no idea. Uh, it's all going to depend on the news, the data, uh, any Fed speak. There's a lot of variables that can really uh, make or break the market during the week. And coming up this week, uh, we have a couple of things uh, in focus. Uh, next week, we have uh, more earnings in focus, uh, along with key economic data on Thursday and Friday. On Tuesday, Microsoft is expected to, uh, uh, it's going to post its fiscal second quarter earnings results after the bell on Tuesday. Shares of the software giant fell over 20% in 2022. Uh, retrading, retrading to levels last seen in early 2021. Uh, nonetheless, uh, it, there is a strong buy consensus among sell-side analysts on Microsoft. According to Wedbush Securities, cloud growth via the firm's Azure unit was better than feared in Q4 and likely to show strength into 2023. While Azure growth has clearly decelerated in the field, we believe Microsoft should be able to see, exceed its 30% Azure growth target in the December. December quarter. Uh, Dan Ives, uh, he says that also that talks to integrate OpenAI's chat GPT into properties like its Bing search engine could be a game changer to be unveiled in 2023. Morgan Stanley analyst Keith Weiss also lauded the reported talks between the two companies. 
Meanwhile, Microsoft has been vocal about efforts to tighten its belt in 2023. In a letter to employees in the week ahead of results, uh, CEO Santia Nadella said the company aims to lay off 10,000 employees around the world and take a $1.2 billion charge related to the job cuts for the quarter. Uh, consensus EPS and uh, EPS estimates for uh, the quarter are $2.34. Uh, consensus revenue estimates are $53.19 billion. Uh, Microsoft has beaten EPS and revenue estimates in seven of the past eight quarters. On Wednesday, uh, after the bell, we get Tesla. Uh, Tesla will be among the most lo- closely watched earnings report of the week. Uh, shares of Tesla, uh, they recorded a stark decline in 2022, falling over C- over 60% as CEO Elon Musk's Twitter purchase proved a significant distraction and financial bo- burden, according to analysts. While shares have roared back in the early part of 2023, rising 20% in the year's first 20 days, the stock remains a far cry from its highs of late 2021. So far in 2023, the automaker has moved to slash prices in both China and North America, which analysts have attributed to both tax and demand considerations. The company has also delayed the expansion of its Shanghai Gigafactory after pulling back production in China around the turn of the year. Analysts remain broadly bullish on the stock, with a consensus buy rating reflected uh, uh, in surveys. However, the average price target has fallen to about 198 after a slate of target cuts to start 2023, $100 lower than the average target, pri- average target prior to the automaker's October earnings release. Revenue expectations have been revised downwards 17 times in the 90 days prior to the earnings release. Consensus EPS estimates are for $1.14 per share. Consensus revenues are for $24.62 billion. Like Microsoft, Tesla has beaten EPS and revenue expectations in seven of the past eight quarters. On, fr- on Thursday, we get core doable good orders at 8.30 a.m., along with Q4 GDP data and weekly uh, jobless claims. New home sales data comes out at 10 a.m. on Thursday. And then Friday, we have core PC price index at 8.30 a.m. and pending home sales at 10 a.m., which will drive SPY and QQQ. Individual names that I am watching this week. First up is Amazon. One hundred dollars uh, has proven to be resistance key level here. I think we break above here. We're next going to test the one hundred three, and then we can fill this gap to one ten. I will be looking to trade it with uh, the stock and options. So if you want any of those plays, click the link in the description, and can give you some heads uh, heads up there. Not financial advice. Uh, in terms of right now, uh, the naked short selling, I talked about this in my last vi- video. I'm not going to get into an argument about it or discuss it any further. Uh, my point is that it's simply a market manipulation tactic from both sides. CEOs can now say they are victims and the retail army jumps on board. I'm going to stress this time and time again. If you buy a whole, buy and hold a stock based on the naked short selling narrative, you will end up a bag holder. Needless, you know, needless to say, there's tons of examples. AMC, GameStop, Bed Bath and Beyond, and last but not least, MMTLP. Trade them, don't own them. And when it comes to trading them, look at the opening range. Uh, GNS, HLBZ. Let's go over here and dive in and do the 15 minute uh, chart here. On uh, GNS, you can see here. So this is when the naked short selling started talking. Was on Thursday, opening range opened at 85 cents, high of 90 cents, low of 74 cents. Once it cleared 90 cents at 10 o'clock, the stock just went on an epic run from 90 cents to $2 for over 100% in potential gains. Then you get the gap up overnight. A lot of pre, uh, after hours pre-market uh, games being done. This is, if you, don't think this is market manipulation. Uh, I uh, I got a bridge to sell you. Look at it. The stock closed at 208. They gapped it up here, opened it at uh, 507, was as high as 519, and then dumped throughout the day. So again, 
On a lot of these types of plays, a great trade is the overnight. That's when you're swing trading it. You know, especially if you get a closing near the high of the days, they'll gap it and then it sells off. So again, uh, this is GNS is a textbook example of that. HLBZ, uh, there was a lot of uh, pre-market action on uh, HLBZ on Friday. Uh, opened at 26 cents, ran all the way to thir almost 37 cents. And then with that was in the first 30 minutes and then just totally uh, uh, crapped the bed throughout the day and closed at 20 cents. So again, guys, don't become a bag holder. Learn how to trade these plays. Opening range, if you're not already in pre-market, if you want to trade pre-market, click the link in the description. You can sign up with Webull. Uh, you can trade <clears throat> 4 a.m. to 8 p.m. And also when you sign up and deposit at least $100, you will get up to 12 free stocks. Uh, last weekend, I talked about HOWL. Uh, nice day on Friday, closed up 22%. Uh, congrats to all that uh, banked in HOWL this week. Uh, major insider buying that I talked about. Uh, uh, we had, uh, they bought 1.8 million shares, $2.21. Very, very significant buy. We're here at 430. So, again, uh, insider buying, uh, especially of that size, is definitely an indicator you want to focus on. Lastly, two penny stocks I am watching for Monday. BOXD, after the uh, uh, close uh, on Friday, they got uh, uh, new financing. This eliminates uh, uh, the risk of bankruptcy. It's no longer a risk. Uh, so BOXD is on alert, uh, watching that for Monday. And then also BTB, uh, this one looks prime for a bounce. Uh, the company put out a press release on the, uh, they uh, basically copy and pasted from GNS. Uh, they formed a special task force to investigate su suspected illegal shorting of its stock. Um, guys, as I said in my last video, uh, all you have to do is look at the convertible note holders and you will find the naked short selling. But again, you, I'm going to definitely get people saying I have no clue what I'm talking about. And uh, then we're also going to get into election conspiracy. So whatever, guys. I'm not going to argue with you guys, but I will also be scanning the markets pre-market on Monday, looking for plays with catalysts for our subscribers. Many companies hold off on PRs for Monday morning, so I'm expecting some fireworks. Click that link in the description or go to signup.insiderfinancial.com or any, sign up on any of the pop-ups on insiderfinancial.com. If something is hot on Monday that I think is a great setup, I will send out an alert to subscribers. Full report sent out to your email and to your mobile number. And again, mobile is the fastest way to get all of our alerts, and it works for all numbers wor worldwide. And the best part is, guys, it is a completely free service. Unsubscribe anytime. Finally, Insider Financial and myself are not investment advisors. This video does not provide investment advice. Always do your own research, make your own investment decisions, or consult with your nearest financial advisor. This video is an nice solicitation recommendation by seller hold securities. This video is our opinion, is meant for informational educational purposes only, and does not provide investment advice. Thanks for watching. Also, smash that like button and hit the notifi notification bell to be notified when a new video is uploaded. We will be coming live Monday after the bell to recap the action. Good luck, guys. Enjoy the rest of the weekend. Bye-bye.